I had an interesting surprise yesterday when I powered up a Neil Pixel ring, which was driven by an AT Tiny 85 microcontroller. The Neil Pixel ring needs three wires, two for power and one for data to control the LEDs. But it was only working with two wires. Well, that's funny. So what's happened here? The answer is that it's using phantom power. To take a closer look at what's going on here, I made an animation to help you understand how the power reaches the NeoPixel on the right hand side and how it survives a disconnected wire. First, let me show you around. The 5 volt power supply on the left supplies both the microcontroller and the NeoPixel ring. To control the colour and brightness of the NeoPixel, the microcontroller toggles the GPIO pin rapidly between a logic high and a logic low, and this arrives at point A in the NeoPixel. To keep things simple, I've represented the NeoPixel internal circuitry with a resistor and an LED, which I've called B. And you can see that current is always present. The capacitor C represents the circuit capacitance, which may be due to wiring or may be due to a physical capacitor. To prevent damage to the NeoPixel, there are two built-in protection diodes. Now let's look at the fault condition where the 5 volt supply wire disconnects. As the incoming data signal is a logic high, 5 volts, the top protection diode conducts and supplies the NeoPixel with power. So it looks like there's nothing wrong at this point. So what happens when the GPIO pin swings to a logic low? Well, you'd expect the current to stop, which it does after the capacitor C discharges. The next time the GPIO goes high, the LED gets power and the capacitor recharges. But look what happens when the GPIO changes rapidly. The current through the LED keeps on going. So, that's what was happening with my NeoPixel ring, phantom power. There are devices that are designed to use phantom power, such as certain types of microphones, so this would just be designed in. But if it's not designed in, a phantom power problem can really be mystifying, such as when two circuit boards are used and only one is powered up, and yet the other still works. This can lead to hours of head scratching, and that's why it's important to power up both boards at the same time. There's plenty written about this effect, but I thought this was a good visual example. And I'm just amazed how well this worked to power 16 NeoPixels.